London, even leafy West London like this is a congested place. It's not a great place if you're a car enthusiast, frankly, but if you do want to be a car enthusiast, the logical thing to do is to own an EV. What about if you want to own an EV that's a bit unique? Well, then you commission a classic one to be built, like this one, like Jerry's 1602 EV. And that's the subject of this episode on The Late Break Show. I'm going to get behind that project, see why he owns it, what it does for him, what does it feel like to drive? I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. Jerry, yeah. what interests me about your car is that you're, you're a guy that lives in London, you've got off-street parking, mm. you've obviously made a conscious decision to own a classic car, but you've sort of thought about the future. Yeah. So tell me how that process fell into place. How did you come by commissioning this? Well, I was thinking of electric. This is, I don't know, about three, four years ago. Yeah. You know, I thought I want to go electric and I looked on the market and I thought, what is it? You got a Leaf. You Which know, is a terrible um, looking car. And actually there's one over there, the i3. Yeah. That was like a strong contender. I was almost about to push the button on that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I came across um, uh, uh, an electric conversion of a Beetle yeah. on YouTube, uh, which Robert filmed with um, uh, Richard. Uh, That's from right. Classic class. I'm fully charged, yeah. And so I called Richard because I was just like blown away. I thought, like, I didn't realize you could do that. Yeah. You know? So, did you always want a BMW? Not necessarily. Um, I was looking at cars. I mean, I, I, I did like his Be uh, Beetle. Yeah. You know, because just the way he did it, spec and stuff. Um, because my, my two children are a bit younger then yeah. as well. So, I thought, I need, you know, more than two seats. Yeah. Right. So, that, that was a remit, really. I need like a back bench at least, you know, yeah. sort of thing. And then um, with the other one that kind of came into uh, our mind was uh, the Audi 100S. Which is a really, really rare car. Yeah, yeah. That coupe. Yeah. Very yeah. early days of front wheel drive kind of coupes, I yeah. would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were thinking of a 100. Yeah, and I, because my dad had a 80 back in the day. Nice. And um, I just had really, really fond memories of that car. That was the first car I really liked that my dad had. Yeah. Right. That's a quality uh, car. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was a really quality yeah. car. And the sound that that car made, I mean, it, it would top about 100, but it was, it was just gorgeous sound, you know? Yeah. And um, then Richard said, oh, um, you know, this, it, you mentioned this. And I was like, yeah, but can we do the 100? But the problem with the 100 was that there, there's so few of them around. Yeah, there um, is. We saw one, but he had some issues with like structurally and, and Richard said, look, it's gonna be a big money pit. Parts are not easy to come by. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you had to think about living with a car for quite a long time. Am I going to be able to find basic parts yeah. to keep yeah. it alive? Yeah. So, you, you, well, we had to kind of make sure that the car was, because if you're going to go through the expense of converting it, yeah. you have to make sure the car is sound. Absolutely. You know? um, and this so, was restored, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. So you pick one of these. Yeah. Electric Classic Cars restored it and converted it. It was all yeah. done in one... In one hit. Well, yeah, we we, we, can't, we kind of use different supplies like for the paint shop and the the, the guys uh, who did the interior. We, we we kind of commissioned that out as well. Yeah. Um, but we all kind of worked together, you know. We kind of like you know, uh, uh, but electric classic cars oversaw the whole conversion. Yeah. Um, it looks so good out on the road. Yeah. We were just following it here. Yeah. It looks so good, especially in this on a, on a sunny day. This. Yeah. This green with the with the deep red interior. This is a VW Porsche Oak Green. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Mark II Golf GTI colour. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, where I recognised yeah. it. Yeah, and I love the GTI with the, with the red stripes on it, you know. Yeah. It just really set it off, and I thought that was a colour to have. And then, you know, you, you forget about these things because they, they, they don't, you know, make those colours anymore, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Going to do a combination of kind of leafy, leafy back streets of London, city streets, 
obviously quite a lot of stop and start because I wanted to drive this car in the environment it was kind of conceived for. So this is like the godfather of the 3 Series, I guess. Pre-E21, pre-E30, which was the M3 shape. This was where it all began. And these are pleasantly petite cars now, so it's actually really good proportions for a city. He hasn't bought a 2002, he hasn't bought a TII or a turbo or anything with a, a kind of engine with any degree of pedigree, really. And that's what I love about this. I don't feel like this car has had its engine, its pistons uh, kind of sacrificed in the name of EV. This isn't an engine which people love and worship. For me, electric converted classics only really work if the engine wasn't particularly of interest. So depending on where people live in the world, piston cars are being outlawed at different rates. Take Jerry here. Jerry lives in London. He works in London. He's only got one, one car and he wanted that car to be practical and he wanted it to be electric. He could have bought an i3, but he decided to not buy a brand new i3, he decided to put his money into a classic BMW, kind of make an old BMW i-friendly EV. And that's what we have here. We've got basically a repurposed classic car that looks incredible. So this type of electric motor is called a, a Hyper 9 and it's really popular for a sort of a cheaper alternative to a Tesla type drivetrain. But the other thing is, is you, you don't need lots of power in a car like this necessarily. So a Hyper 9 is air cooled, it's not liquid cooled. It bolts onto, uh, you can either direct drive it through a prop shaft or like this, it's bolted to the bell housing of the original gearbox. Then you can shift gears if you wish, or you can just simply get in it, like leave it in third and just drive it all day long. The choice is yours. So it still goes into the gearbox, into the prop shaft and into the, the back axle. So you basically put it in gear, let out the clutch and then take, leave your foot off the clutch now and just accelerate in the gear. No servo on the brakes, um, so the pedal's firm, but I don't mind that. It's not a heavy car. It's only, I believe it's only about 1100 kilos. It's not much at all, really. The steering is firm because it's non-power assisted, but I think Jerry's considering retrofitting electric power steering, which you can get. Uh, there's many modules available off modern cars, which you can fit on the column. Yes, away from the lights. I think what, what I like about it is, is it's a simple shaped car. Yeah. And you've kept it nice and clean. Yeah, yeah. I've you, actually cleaned it up even more than before because you had the uh, rubber strips on the side, you know, for the... Yes, the bump strips. Yeah, so yeah. they've been deleted. Yeah, they were deleted because I just thought um, you had the overriders on the bumpers on the front and back. Yeah. Uh, originally, I wasn't going to put the bumper on the front. Yeah. Um, but I quite like that kind of blade design. I because, like the bumper. I know yeah. that was it the, the TII was it the turbo didn't have the bumper or a lot of them get well the turbo off. and some of the ti but, but they had the front uh, they go for the, the chin spoiler yeah, and yeah. but i prefer it with the thin yeah. blade bumper personally well the thing is you don't get both of them no normally right so but i was gonna put the chin spoiler on but somebody pointed out because this is the furthest edge of the car yeah they said i'm always going to have little dings in that if i don't do anything to protect that <laughs> so i thought i've got to put a bumper on it yeah right london life yeah yeah so and, and he had fog lights on the bumper and so we had it re-chromed and it's lovely. You know, and yeah, I just think that kind of clean lines of the, you know. It looks so good through the city. Like yeah. in a world where there's a lot of big cars on the road, even a small car is big now. Yeah. You yeah. forget how sort of yeah. slim and petite this is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the most important, probably the most important question is, is, yeah. is as someone that lives in London, yeah. as someone that um, obviously you've got a, an electric motorbike, you were saying as well. Yeah, yeah. Is this exempt from ULEs and all the other congestion yeah. charges and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's exempt from everything pretty much. Um, Brilliant. And, uh, you know, I was saying, you know, that it, for road tax for electric cars is, is zero anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's also listed as historic. Yeah. So that's exempt as well. So, and it's MOT you know. exempt? Uh, yes, kind of. If but you want it to be. Yeah, if you want it to be. But the thing is, I had MOT done it 
And when I took it to the garage, the guys were just ogling over the car. <laughs> they hardly checked anything. Yeah. Really? Because I went under the pit and it was just immaculate under, underneath still, yeah. you know. So yeah. I don't like driving in the winter time. You know, the first year I had it, yeah. Because actually it's my, right now it's my only car. Is it? Yeah. It's your only car? Yeah, it's my only car. Fantastic. Um, but I'm getting something And you've else. got a family? Yeah. yeah. So this is your one car? Yeah. yeah. And it lives in a carport, which I like. You've, yeah. got, you've got your protective cover over it. Yeah. So even if it wasn't exempt because it's an electric car, it's exempt because it's a classic car. Yeah. So you've kind of future-proofed it in two ways. Two ways, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. reusing an old car. Yeah. And it's EV. Mm. And old. Yeah. Well, old and new, because I mean, this is, um, it, it's five years, uh, I'm five years older than the car. Are you? Right. So I was thinking like, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's testament that you can still look good and, you know, uh, feel good, right? Even when so, you're a bit older. When you're a bit older, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, uh, if, if you preserve things, you know, and you, and you, and you care and you uh, nurture them. As somebody said to me the other day, he said, I'm not the owner of the vehicle, I'm just the custodian. It's very true. Right? So, um, you know, just kind of giving it fresh lungs and, you know, a motor uh, that will kind of keep it lasting, yeah. you know. And actually, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be little things like, you know, because the old electronics and stuff like that, you know, need to be operated over time. And, you know, little, little things like that. I mean, the only thing I've changed on is the wipers. <laughs> is that know? it? <laughs> That's it, yeah. Brilliant. People have been admiring this car, like, all afternoon. Because it just, this paint just pops in the sun. It's got the chrome. It's got those cross-lace BBS wheels. 15s, 30 millimeter suspension drops. So not slammed, but just drop nice. He said it handles brilliantly. Am I going to experience that today? Unlikely, because I'm mostly in London. But while I'm in the traffic here, waiting for the lights to change, it's got adjustable regen. I flick that switch, you've got regen braking if you want it, I think 30%. Down here, he's got individual heated seats. So <laughs> he's got the back seats when he had it all um, reupholstered and decided to put E21 seats in, stitched in leather. He had heated seat inserts put in. So it's heated front and rear seats all independently. You've got infotainment here with Apple CarPlay um, and Android Auto and that's linked up to a, an amp under that seat no an amp under there and a sub with Focal speakers in the doors which have been the, the door trims have been redone he's really thought about I want good sounds I want phone connectivity I want enough space to take my two kids out in I don't mind the noise of it the little bit of transmission it gives it a little bit more of a classic car feel still but having driven a lot of electric converted classics over the last five or so years, I'm really interested to see why people build what they build and where they put them to use. And that's why I wanted to see Jerry today. This is where he drives it. You know, these are the people who, who are, give this car an admiring glance. But this car's probably cost Jerry in the region of about 80 grand. That's from you know buying the car to it being delivered, fulfilling his vision. And his vision, I think, is, is brilliant. He purposely deleted the wood, for example, the wood trim, here and there and on top of the doors. He's refashioned the door trims. He's put a combination of leather and vinyl in. Leather where you know you're gonna touch it. Vinyl where you know you're pretty much not gonna touch it. You're more like to scuff it with your legs. It's just a, a, a well, executed black box yeah, yeah. that's what it is isn't yeah, it yeah so that's I mean, a battery box isn't it this is a battery box so uh i think it's about uh it's as close as it's, it's more of a 50 50 split uh yeah. weight, weight distribution i think originally it was like 60 40. yeah you were showing you were telling yeah. me in the spec so it's actually a better balanced I, car than yeah, it was i think it's like 55 45 now right okay um, so the, the motor's actually under there if you can give a certain angles you can see that that silver yeah. So, so, so that's a motor. Yeah. And then on top of that, we've got some batteries in here. I see it. You can see yeah. it. And then you've got a, a, bra a brace there with the yeah. orange high voltage yeah. leads. Yeah. So the, when you were choosing your sort of spec, yeah. you can get, obviously a lot of people go big power, kind mm. of hot rod almost, mm. 500, mm. 600 horsepower, which is mm. totally achievable. Mm. You seem to have gone down the route of kind of more equivalent power to what the car was sort of born with. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean originally I was thinking of putting more power in it. Yeah. Um, and I thought, yeah, I want to. But now having driven it, I think it's right. 
yeah. what it is. Yeah. Because then also you start kind of going down a whole new rabbit hole of like, you know, uh, Beefing brakes. up everything, brakes and all Suspension. that sort of stuff. Suspension. Which you already did anyway, because yeah. it's like E21 brakes. Yeah. Uh, the front and drum drum still at the back. Um, and, um, you know, then I thought like, yeah, you're just kind of opening up a whole new kind of worms in that, in that respect. So it's more sympathetic to what the car originally was. So did you, yeah. get, did you get a bit of a, feat, a satisfaction of driving a classic even when you're in 20 mile an hour speed limits. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I saw you when you went past a couple of shop windows and you yeah. get that amazing reflection. And, yeah. Because it, it, it just looks great. Yeah. And it's, it's a bit of a chill out. Yeah, drive, yeah, right? yeah, you haven't yeah. built this as a track day car. No, no, exactly. I mean, I mean it performs. I mean, uh, it, you can check it around. Uh, roundabouts are brilliant. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you have great fun because you, cause it's so small as well. It's so nimble. You, 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 you can chuck it around. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Thirty mil lowered. Uh, yeah, about thirty mil. Yeah. Um, but it's also been stanced because of the wheels and all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Um, I remember I was cleaning underneath and I was trying to put my hand in. You know, I couldn't get my head under there. You know, because it's just the stance of it. It looks you know? so good. There we go. See, that's a really, that's a really decent punch of performance. Not out of control, not headline grabbing Tesla plaid stuff at all. Just kind of works for this recipe. Suspension's been set up well, it's not too firm. 30 mil lowered on um, Bilstein dampers and eye back uh, springs. And on those 15s with 50 profile tyres, you're getting a good ride quality and you're still getting the stance, which I think has attracted so many admiring glances today. Those BBS cross lace rims from a later BMW. And normally I didn't, wouldn't like the chin spoiler with the chrome bumper, but I think it just looks right with the single headlights. People often say to me, which classics would suit being electric converted? Well, I'll throw the question to you in the comments. What car would you convert to uh, an EV? Me, DeLorean, Citroen DS, uh, Volvo 240, any Saab. I've got the regen on, it's actually quite, it's actually quite a pleasant regen, it's not too harsh. Um, the switches are all very subtle, the modern switches. That's my state of charge down there by the gear knob. What's that saying? 85.9%. I'm of the opinion that some cars just don't have interesting engines but look great. And if, if, if Jerry had done a 2002 TII, then maybe people would be shaking their fists a little bit more. Let's have a look in the boot, Jerry. Yeah. There you go. See, the thing about old cars is I'm always surprised pleasantly of yeah. how much space there is. Yeah. And that's even with some batteries in it. Yeah, so, so that's, that's a battery box, which kind of like, if you see where the parcel shelf is. Yeah. Yeah, it's right up to the, the back of that seat. So it's right. about yay yeah. deep. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. The LG Chem, they're like shoebox size. Yeah. Right, so they've, they've been stacked. So uh, LG Chem lithium ion cells. Yeah. And so 16, I think, in total. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to. I, th I think it's roughly about eight and eight. And yeah. how many kilowatt hours is this pack? Uh, Forty. It's Forty kilowatt. Forty kilowatt yeah. hours. Okay, yeah. so yeah. about the same as like a, a leaf. Yeah, yeah. It, like. it, 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 it gives about one hundred and fifty mile range. One hundred and fifty mile yeah. range. Okay. Well, so well, on a day like this, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know. So, th and, and talking of which, that is your that is a charger. charge port. Yeah, so yeah. So the charge port kind of that's there. If you can see. Yeah. There's your repurpose filler with the Type yeah. Two connector. Yeah, and it's got. I mean, the, 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 just getting the design because originally it was going to be just like a black cover, yeah. but we may have to kind of uh, recondition, that's, use the black cover on there. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So you know, because people think, oh yeah, well it's charging port, you know, but they're like, oh, actually, is it there? And yeah. Like, so so it looks. I mean, if you didn't know, you know, you. I, I think. What I get sometimes is like when I take you somewhere, people look under the see where the exhaust is. <laughs> oh, what? No exhaust? <laughs> There's no exhaust, right? Of course. Oh, you've got, right. a, you've got a reversing a reversing camera. camera, yeah. 
Yeah. You clever thing. Yeah. I didn't even notice that at first. Yeah. So battery box lives here. Yeah, and uh, under here we've actually got uh, the um, the pulley system for the uh, rear inertia seat belts, which didn't originally come with these cars. Of course. Right. Uh, so uh, we so just we just kind of covered that up. I mean, because uh, you want to take your children in a, in a safer car, you've got th three point. Well, belts. you're adding a bit of safety in there because the the, 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 the other belts, you just kind of static belts. You just kind of either put the lap, lap belt <laughs> or you know, you just kind of like it's a bit it's, slack. It's, yeah, especially if you're banging around and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then uh, got some controllers uh, under here um, yeah. and the 12 volt battery. Yeah. And under here, keep my charging cables, which is where the uh, spare wheel would go. Yeah. So originally we thought the spare wheel maybe, maybe could have kept the spare wheel, but because of the battery box, because it's so big. Yeah. You, you know, we thought, okay, what are we going to do with this space? And you can't see right now, but it's actually got LED lights under here and under here. I thought I saw yeah. like a bluey glow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's just nice, you know, when you're kind of faffing for, you know, your yeah. your cables in the dark and stuff, you know. It's, That's it's, neat. Uh, yeah. So you have a compressor with some, a can of foam like modern cars. Yeah. You've got your cable yeah, tidy cables. under yeah. that false floor. Yeah. 150 mile range. So do you use it on longer journeys? I mean, is this more of a sort of a local car, um, a London-y centric car? Yeah, I mean, the longest I've been is actually when I drove back from Wales. Yeah. Um, but I stopped off. Uh, uh, overnight um, yeah. to, to meet some relatives. Okay, so the battery, these batteries, where did they come from originally? Are these from and the motor, th this motor, well, I forgot to say. <laughs> yeah, the, the motor's a Hyper 9. Yeah. Uh, 120 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, 173 foot pound of torque. And as you know, it's, it's about the torque in these things. Absolutely. Um, so we've still got the manual gears. Yes. Right. Uh, so do you pick a gear and kind of leave it in a gear? Pretty much, is, yeah. So uh, like driving around here, I'll just put it in second and just drive up, keep it in second. Yeah. And, and so you don't, because it's just like a switch. It is. But, but you can still get the gear ratios. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, putting it in one, in first gear is uh, is a bit of nonsense because it, it talks <laughs> it's just pointless. like that. And you probably end up plopping the clutch and stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, so second kind of does me until about 60. Okay. And then, uh, you know, you can, uh, one of the modern ways, I mean, I just, just brewed into fourth. Yeah. Go from second to fourth sort of thing, you know, and. Yeah. Um, and aesthetically, it, it makes it look standard because you look through the yeah. window, yeah. parked here, yeah. it's got a gear lever still. Yeah. So you can still, you know, if you, if you still want to kind of like have that sensation, you know, you can still do that and you can still feel uh, you know, the sensations of the motor running because you can hear that. I didn't put any soundproofing in it. No, I quite like the sound of the, yeah. these motors, yeah. yeah. So I still wanted some sort of organic feel to put it, you know, and the whole thing with the boot is, I mean, I can get one shopping in here. Absolutely. Well, you yeah. do because it's your yeah. only car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's quite funny. I mean, this is, so sometimes I get quite a lot of interest at the supermarket. So I'm like, what? What, what, what is this thing? You know, really? especially if I got it plugged in. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, didn't know you yeah, could Yeah, you that. get a bit of free charge at the supermarket, yeah. can't yeah. you? Yeah, exactly. Loving the quarter lights, look. It's important to have quarter lights on a warm, warm day like this. And you know, we're in a really affluent part of London, the sort of Chiswick Barnes area. And this car's getting way more looks than cars that are worth the same price, double, triple. You know, I'm looking at Ben Tagers. I'm looking at full-size Range Rovers, supercharged Range Rovers, KNs galore. Um, 911s and none of those cars are, are appropriate in the city they're good cars in many 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 ways but a lot of people just don't necessarily buy cars that actually fit the life they lead and the place they live in whereas i think jerry's actually thought hard about this he's like well i live in london and when i go out of london 150 miles would be all right or he says sometimes i hire a car if i want to go really far afield with my family I haven't got to worry about overheating. It's a hot day today. I haven't got to worry about overheating in traffic. Got no radiators. This motor down there, somewhere in the transmission tunnel, is air cooled. I do feel slightly smug about the fact I'm driving around in congested London in a car that looks so cool. And yet, it doesn't have to be MOT'd. It doesn't have to be taxed. It doesn't have to pay congestion charge, ULES, whatever. So it's kind of like, it ticks a lot of boxes to me. It ticks an awful lot of boxes. Typically on the late break show, 50% of my content is EV. I've been featuring electric cars now for quite a few years, both retro stuff and new stuff, of course. Uh, I will put a link somewhere on the screen now for the playlist of EVs. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It'd be interesting to know what you would do 
in a situation like this, would you keep a car like this piston, regardless of the cost, or would you drive a car like this as an EV like this? Because this car's, this has been a future proof now for quite a long time. And like Jerry said, maybe in three or four, five years, he might look at what other batteries he could fit in the same boxes, the same enclosures, or upgrade the motor. He could upgrade it to rapid charge potentially. In the same way that some people will not see the financial sense in doing an EV converted classic. It depends. It really depends on what your mindset is and whether you're playing the long game with stuff. Putting solar on the roof of your house might not make sense for the first two or three years, but then it'll play the long game. It will totally stack up. Totally. I like your mantra, your your setup here, Jerry. Mm. You got your you got your zappy charger there. Yeah. Obviously, you've got off-street parking, which always helps yeah, uh, yeah. in London. But you've also got an electric motorbike. Mm. So, uh, and and <laughs> above our heads is a, a nice bank of solar panels. Yeah. So, you are generating some of your own power, which is your own fuel for your bike, yeah. car, yeah. and house. Yeah, pretty much. Brilliant. Yeah. Actually, I mean, I think with the, with the charging, it's, it's these that probably take more power than the house itself i bet right i bet so um but if i've got the washing machine running or something like that uh then obviously the zappy can manage with that yeah with the bikes um actually if you just look at it there's just a kettle plug oh, yeah. that uses right yeah so uh i'll just charge you off that um and this is about one kilowatt one and a half kilowatts it charges yeah. so that's enough for the solar panels i'm slightly you know, Jealous. I, I love yeah. that. I love what a great setup. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, it's like, you know, being green and, yeah, you know, you gain your energy for free, especially with petrol prices and stuff, the way they're going. I know. You well, know. And, and like you said before, living in London, it's only going to, cars, piston cars are only going mm. to get outlawed more and more. Mm. Uh, and presumably p piston bikes. Yeah. Hence the yeah. influx of electric scooters everywhere. And yeah, yeah. Um, E-bikes. E-bikes, yeah. yeah. But you went down, you went full electric sports bike. Yeah, because I was waiting for that, and uh, it was a while, and then I was to be built. Like, yeah, so I was, I was thinking like I want something, and then uh, I thought oh, I might fancy like just going for a spin on it. Yeah. The guy said, "Go and do your CBD, um, and then come when you can, you can have a test ride." So this is your first full motorbike. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. What a great setup. Yeah. Electric converter classic, brand new electric motorbike, bit of solar on the roof that's feeding these. What's next? <laughs> You want to know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a GI Yaris. Uh, a GI order. Yaris? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not electric. <laughs> no, but you know. This is yin and yang I can get on board with. <laughs> but it's kind of like old school, you know. It's, it's a good winter car, you yeah. know, four wheel drive and all that, you know. Tr true. I don't like taking that in the winter, you know, and this in the winter. I don't want it in rain, you know. It's just like, I don't like riding. Yeah. You know, back in the days, I think the Integrale was my halo. Oh, hell. You know, and I think that's unbound to that. You really. said your first car was a, a Lancia Delta, yeah, but not yeah. an Integrale. No, no, no. A one point two. I couldn't afford one then, right? Yeah. But I still lost after that car. Yeah. You know. There you go. Yeah. You're having you're having your sort of midlife crisis. Well, people said that. GR. Because, yeah, yeah. But you know, it kind of keeps you, keeps you young. But with that thing, I mean, I, I you know, it, it's it's more around you know, you appreciate it more, and you just want to cruise around as you as you, well, um, I you love know, this. A bit like you know. solar panels, you don't buy it playing the short game. No. You buy it thinking about the, you know, the, the cost spread over five years or seven years. Yeah. I guess that's the way you've thought about this. This yeah. is not a cheap undertaking. No. It's a very personal car. Yeah. It's, but it's, it's here to stay for a good while, right? Yeah. yeah you're not, you're right. not going to punt it on in a year's time or anything. No, no, no. It's not one of those. It's, it's a unique thing, right? I mean, it's like, you know, I mean... I it's cool. Have, I, can't, I, can't think, I can't think of another one that's been done. Like, you know, if it has... No. I mean, I think, honestly, from every angle I've seen it today, yeah. I've just gone, yeah. I've taken a lot of pictures of it. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that so many people try and find exclusivity and in, by doing so, sort of chase what everybody else is doing? You know, driving around today, there's so many black SUVs. Not exclusive at all, it seems. But yet, cars like this are completely personal. You know, this is Jerry's Beamer. This is his idea of taking an old car, a classic, an icon, and dragging it into the 21st century and making it kind of perfect for the way he lives, the place he lives in, here, London. It's his only car. Also, making his own fuel with the solar panels on the roof. 
I think it's a great thing. And I hope you guys can appreciate a car like this. Even if you might not do it yourself, you can kind of see that in an environment like this, it totally makes sense. It's future-proofing motoring in many ways. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. And why not become a Patreon? Support us that way and you can get earlier access to videos like this. I'll put a link in the description below. Cheers.